Welcome, this is Lane Creations and I'm really excited for this announcement. It's been a uh, long time coming. I have a lot of people asking me how to get into the world of being a SOC analyst. And well, one of the best ways to do it is to understand the tools and they want to use Splunk Enterprise Security, but unfortunately Splunk Enterprise Security is behind a paywall in the sense that you must have a paid license to use it. If you work in a company that already has it, that's great. But a lot of us, especially going through school or trying to do stuff like that, can't afford the cost of Splunk Enterprise Security. So I have built a simulator, and please remember, it is a simulator. It is not Splunk. It just helps simulate some of those capabilities so that you can feel comfortable with the way that the layout works for Splunk Enterprise Security. And it's a cost you can afford, as in free. If you've got Windows on your system or you can uh, emulate uh, this Windows software, you are able to use this program. You just come to my GitHub site, Lane Creations, and then you'll find Lane ES Simulator. I'll put the link down below in the video, and you can just come and get it. What you're looking for is this little uh, zip file. You can come in here, you just go download it, download the zip, extract it, and unfortunately what you're going to do is when you extract, extract it, Right now you're going to get these three files, which means you actually have another zip inside a zip. Sorry about that. It is what it is. But unzip twice, you'll unzip this, and then you'll have the ability to run this program. So what we're going to do now is kind of walk you through what to expect. This is the beta version. I'm calling it beta 1.0. Please recognize there are some bugs. I'll point them out as I go along. Uh, but I'm hoping that this gets you a long way into understanding the uh, this amazing tool Splunk Enterprise Security and something you can use at your own to pace without having to have a license. All right, so I have I've got my stuff unzipped. It creates seven files. They all need to stay together. They need these DLLs to be able to work. You'll go ahead and double click this Splunk ES emulator win form. You might get popped up saying, "Do you trust this?" You'll have to do the trust with a big blue screen. This computer, because it built it, it's fine. I'll pop it. You're gonna get a little banner telling you that this is an, a fan-made project, not affiliated with Splunk. And we're give, given to a search screen. Now, this has a lot of similarities to Splunk. It's not perfect. Again, this is a beta version, and I'm building this with Windows Forms using C Sharp Visual Studio. It is not Splunk which Splunk is built in a totally different language. So I'm just happening to emulate a lot of those features. I'm not gonna go into a ton of the capabilities here. One of the things you should notice immediately is Splunk returns nothing from its data unless you write a, an SPL query. This is a little reverse. It actually shows the data and you'll actually re reduce down what you see. So for example, if I do index equals win event log, press enter, it's gonna return me back the results. I can do all sorts of Splunk commands in here. Win event, and I can go star. It's not gonna change anything because it's all the same stuff. We can then exit, go put, it'll even take index equals star here. We can even use just star pipe, and it'll get back all the results. We can do a table where we do timestamp and log level, and now we have table command working, fields works, we could do fields, log level, and we can do sort, it'll sort it in alphabetical, reverse alphabetical order, if we take the minus out, it can take a plus, or most of you probably didn't even know you, that was using a plus, we, if we don't put anything in sort, it automatically assumes a plus. So we have full Splunk capabilities. You can bring it all back by clearing out the screen and so you can search. We needed this because you may need to do some searches to be able to make the SIM part that when the tickets come in to be able to find the pieces you're looking for. So we built a lot of the search capabilities into the search bar. All right, so we're gonna go navigate around. The main place you're gonna be, if you're learning Splunk, the SIM, this enterprise security tool, you're gonna to be going into Mission Control. And this is the page that has the most gotchas that I've seen when I've been using it on different programs. We're working on fixing that, but it won't release for a little bit. Um, all these buttons look great. It was perfectly 
suited for my screen then I put on my laptop and I actually have like a button that says start on an investigation falls off the words too short or some of the words get cut at the little bottom I'm sorry I'm going to make sure if you click here on help it will load up on every page you're gonna have a help page you can bring up the tutorial and I will show what the page looks like so that's gonna help you the buttons are all functioning as far as I can tell they just may not be as crisp and clean as they show on this page so I apologize for that but it is what it is but you can click help and that will automatically load up a YouTube page on the instructions for the page you're on so I am mission control it can be slightly different in mission control you actually have the ability to click up here and select them all I don't have that capability instead you have to manually click them so you start to click them you get your new options that you can edit you have multiple tickets at the exact same time you can change who they're assigned to right now the tickets are unassigned or I can add it to investigation investigation will be rolling out in the next version right now I didn't have time and I wanted to get this thing out so we won't be doing investigations but that's a little higher level anyway so we're just going to be dealing with the findings and dealing with them so you can come in here with edit or assign to me and do multiple tickets at the same time as soon as you clear out all of the check boxes it doesn't always update so you just have to click somewhere else so for example I clicked here those buttons don't show up as soon as I click in the next row they pop up but this emula emulates Splunk Enterprise Security so that does the exact same thing when you click one of these you get three buttons to uh, manipulate where you can edit them and assign to the yourself and add to investigation one minor little difference when you hit the assign to me a pop-up occurs with all this information I figured it'd be a lot easier I could get this done if I just use this bar twice if you hit the assign to me it's going to take everything you change over here and update your tickets oh, or you can manually do it yourself you can pick one ticket alone you notice each time I change from one ticket to another it's updating over here so I can come here and say I want to assign this to the administrator I'm going to make it status in progress. I'm going to put it, I'm going to leave its disposition. I'm going to come in here and put a note. Some note. Hopefully, you get a little better note than that. I am showing how to add a note. You don't have to fill out all these fields. Whatever you fill out, it will log. And so I can now see a history. The finding was created at this time. Owner was changed from unassigned administer, administrator at this time the status change the notes that's exactly like you have in enterprise security and mission control it keeps track of all the changes to the tickets we're keeping track here and so and you'll notice if you come over here we can scroll over it is now owned by the administrator we change the sensitivity we're gonna go blue I'm gonna hit save we get a new sensitivity there and sensitivity has been updated We'll go later into describing how to solve these tickets. That's not where I'm going to focus on right now. This is just to give an overview of this amazing product that we're excited to show. So the rest of this is just kind of the bells and whistles that come with enterprise security. The main thing you want to know as a mission analyst is how to use this analyst queue resolving tickets. That's that what the introduction, what you would need to be able to know to be a SOC level one analyst in enterprise security is to really be feel comfortable on this screen being able to go through and resolve the tickets but what else we have we have a bowl, whole bunch of pages so we can get the security posture and sometimes as I said still work the very first time it's gonna pop this screen behind it'll from now on it's not gonna do that but the very first time you change to one of these analytics it will sh it will find itself behind the ES emulator search and you can just come down here grab it move it forward or shrink the ES emulator or move it out of the way however you want to go about it but if I come into here if I come to security posture I can see this the status there I can go to executive summary and I can see the number of tickets that have come through we've got three these aren't solved and that's because we have a triaged any now this is not dynamic so when we triage tickets it's not going to update this for you I want you just to know that that's one of the places there's an executive summary page where they can see how long it's taking to resolve tickets 
how many investigations were created, how many tickets are coming through. We have here the by domain, which would be we have endpoint uh, alerts, we have network alerts, we have what domain they came from as far as untriaged, what type, they're all findings. Here were the three types, excessive port scanning, multiple failed logins, unusual number of file de uh, deletions, uh, frequent finding sources, etc. Anyway, this will get you an idea of what that page looks like and some of the reporting that comes back from enterprise security. We can come down, we can go to SOC operations, and this is going to be mean time to triage. It's, it's just a different side of the view of the executive summary. This is kind of a management summary. SOC operations would be your SOC analyst, your SOC lead, what they're going to want to know. Mean time to triage, what's the workload, how many findings are being assigned during the time period, uh, what's their end states, what's the disposition. Disposition is false positive, true positive, uh, things like that, and it will categorize those since we haven't resolved any, they don't fix. Again, this is beta, we're not going, this is not a dynamic content, this is just a screenshot of what it would look like at this point in time in enterprise security. I can come down here and we can get Go into dashboards. This is should be familiar for with enterprise security with just Splunk Enterprise. How to go around and navigate the dashboards. You can get your reports back. We have over here, but you're going to find this all goes to work in progress. Haven't got there yet, but you will get. You can get into details on security intelligence, security domains, cloud security, and audit. Again, these are all just as a general rule. You won't be in this stuff as a tier one analyst. By my definition, what a tier one analyst is, that's the fact that you're an entry level SOC analyst. You're going to be looking for the tickets. You're going to be resolving the, the tickets that they have playbooks for, and you're going to be following those playbooks. You're not really going to be coming into much of this information, and they have to be configured. These dashboards will not fill out just out of the box with enterprise security. So, depending on how mature an organization you have with enterprise security, you may not even have these things. We'll get them in there in later versions, but this stuff is much more for your tier two, tier three analysts as they start to build out enterprise security and build more features into it. We've got security content. This is, again, this is for administration purposes, all of your searches, things like that, use case libraries, risk factors, response plans, sort playbooks. We also have here configurations. These things are all about the configurations and how they change the interface for you. You won't need to go into them. Go ahead and look at them. We'll have videos over time showing how they work. So as you become more mature in your understanding of enterprise security, it's not bad to know what those things are, but they're not necessary for a tier one analyst. And then again, you can hit the search button and you're taken right back to our search bar. I, I'm gonna have more videos, we're gonna have more details on this. Big thing is if you're a tier one analyst, you're gonna wanna know how to use this search and how to get go to mission control so you can see the alerts that have come through. And I'm just going to give a real quick detail. If you don't, if you look at this ticket and you go and say, all right, I got multiple failed logins by a, by a six, followed by a success. All right, well, what do I do about that? And so I can go look at it. I can see that there was, it's coming from this entity 10.0.1.5. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to go to search. I'm going to go index equals star. 10, 0, 1, 5. I can now look at these alerts and I'm going to have that information. That's what an analyst would do. They'd go search, make sure they look at the logs, find out what they're going to support. How, what are we going to do with this ticket? We see that a failed user from these times, notice the logs don't come in order of time. So we're going to go sort timestamp. Now we have them in chronological order. We can see when these tickets came in. We had a firewall block. We had a firewall block. And we see a failed user, user login from a 185.191 address. That's probably an external site. I mean, if you know you're a, I don't think this is gonna be your, uh, your external, you're gonna be part of your network. So this is a publicly routable IP address. And so someone is attempting from a publicly routable IP address to log into one of your internal systems. That's usually not a good idea. You get a successful login. And then we also see that a process was created. A PowerShell.exe file was created shortly 
after the successful login. That might be something we want to pay attention to. This might be something we want to elevate. So we'll go back to our mission control. We come in here, we'll choose the disposition. We'd probably go with a true positive, suspicious activity. We might put some notes in there and we would just update the ticket. So we'll just do that for this sake. And then, so we'll come in here, true positive. And the status will be closed. Urgency, we'll put it, we'll leave it at there. Sensitivity, we'll leave alone. Suspicious. Wow, can't spell. Suspicious. Dangerous activity. I won't try to spell that. Dangerous activity. User logged in from remote site and failed authentication multiple times and then succeeded and launched a PowerShell script. I'm going to hit save. And there we go. We can see the tickets closed. We can get our, there's our previous information on this one. And anyway, so that is our mission control in a nutshell. This is, this is a uh, emulator. It's not perfect. I'm not getting paid for this. So please no, uh, no hate mail telling me about this bug or this bug. If it's constructive, come out to my Discord site. Tell me what you want to see improved, what features you want. I'm putting it on there, but this is just a passion project, something I do because I want to, because I want to help the community. And so I hope this is helpful for you. Give me a thumbs up, uh, like this, subscribe to my videos if you want. And I hope this helps you move from being a lame analyst to a Splunk Ninja.